Anthracite coal, often referred to as hard coal, is a hard, compact variety of coal that has a submetallic luster to it. It has the highest carbon content and the fewest impurities and the highest energy density of all types of coal and is the highest ranking of coals. Anthracite coal is the most metamorphous type of coal but still represents low-grade metamorphism in which the carbon content is between 92% and 98%. The term is applied to those varieties of coal which do not give off tarry or other hydrocarbon vapors when heated below their point of ignition. Anthracite coal ignites with difficulty and burns with a short, blue, and smokeless flame, which is why it was often called America's cleanest smoke.
anthracite coal is categorized into standard grade, which is used mainly in power generation, and high grade and ultra high grade, the principal uses of which are in the metallurgy sector. Anthracite accounts for about 1% of the world's coal reserves and is mined in only a few countries around the world. China accounts for the majority of global production with Russia, Ukraine, North Korea, South Africa, Vietnam, the UK, Australia, Canada, and the good old U.S. of A. Total production in 2010 was 670 million tons. Other terms which refer to anthracite coal are black coal, hard coal, stone coal, dark coal, coffee coal, blind coal in Scotland, Kilkenny coal in Ireland, crow coal or craw coal, and here in good old northeastern Pennsylvania, the black diamonds. Blue coal is the term for a once popular and trademark brand of anthracite that was mined by the Glen Alden Coal Company, also right here in northeastern Pennsylvania, Ashley, Pennsylvania to be specific. It was sprayed with the blue dye at the mine before shipping to its northeastern U.S. markets as to distinguish it from its competitors. The St. Nicholas Coal Breaker that was formerly located in Mahanoy City was once the largest coal breaker in the world and was the last of its kind in the state of Pennsylvania. It was the size of a city block and it took 3,800 tons of steel and 10,000 cubic yards of concrete to build it. The first one was opened in 1861, 
on Christmas Day, hence where it got its name. The second one, which replaced it, was opened in 1931 and closed 34 years later in 1965 and was demolished just a few short years ago in 2018. According to an article in The Morning Call, invented in the 1840s, breakers transformed large, hard to ignite chunks of raw anthracite into a variety of smaller sizes that were suitable for smelting iron, propelling a locomotive, running a machine, or heating a building. A conveyor carried raw coal from the top floor through a variety of crushing devices and screens to the bottom where the finished product, which was given names like egg coal, stove coal, chestnut and pea size coal, which was according to its size, was loaded onto rail cars and taken to cities like New York, Philadelphia, and Baltimore. The St. Nicholas Breaker could process 12,500 tons of coal per day and employed hundreds of workers including young breaker boys who sorted the sharp slate and bone from the raw anthracite at the top of the breaker. And according to a worker at the Number 9 Coal Mine Museum in Lansford, Pennsylvania, if they still had all of their fingers by the time they were a teenager, they were darn good at their job. In operation, the St. Nicholas Coal Breaker was described as sounding like thunder. During the diesel era, the Lake Erie, Franklin, and Clarion Railroad consisted essentially of a single line with a few loaders along it from Strattonville, Pennsylvania to Holden, Pennsylvania. The number of loaders ranged from one to four during this era. During the early 1960s, the LEFNC had three RS1s and one active loader that ran two trains daily in the afternoon and in the evening. Trains started at Clarion, Pennsylvania, which was home of the engine house and offices, picking up cars from local industries and loaded coal hoppers along the way, interchanging with the New York Central and the Pennsylvania Railroad at Sutton, Pennsylvania and Somerville, Pennsylvania, and dropping empty hoppers and cars at industries on the trip back to Clarion. Coal traffic picked up in the 1970s, necessitating an upgrade to EMD SW1500 and later MP15 DC locomotives. This increase in motive power allowed the LEFNC to run multiple trains daily to work all the loaders, but the pattern was likely the same. Pick up cars from Clarion to Somerville, drop off cars from Somerville to Clarion. Although not located in the Keystone State, the Chicago and Eastern Illinois was a simple but strategically located railroad that linked St. Louis and two major coal mining regions with Chicago. Missouri Pacific took control of the railroad in 1967 and sold the Indiana coal route to the Louisville and Nashville two years later. That's why you can see both Union Pacific and CSX trains running the former C and EI line heading south out of Dalton to this day. The game changer for coal started around 2008 when natural gas prices plummeted. That was about the same time drilling for natural gas in the Marcellus Shale started to take off. There were also more renewable energy options that included wind and solar powered energy generation. After World War II, oil and gas became more readily available and people began replacing their coal furnaces. But recently when heating oil and electricity became more expensive, there was a renaissance with coal heaters. Many people are choosing coal instead of oil or wood because you don't get the same kind of creosote buildup with anthracite that you do with wood. Add to that, Coal burning heaters and furnaces are still being manufactured. Natural gas prices are lower, so it's difficult to compete with that. But the gas lines don't extend everywhere, particularly in rural areas. With the goal of converting to cleaner and greener sources of energy, there has been a reduction in coal production as coal fired power plants are closing or converting to natural gas. However, since soft coal is mainly used in energy generation, it's definitely affecting the bituminous region more than the anthracite region. There were about 12 active deep mines in eastern Pennsylvania just a few years ago. Those would be in Dauphin, Northumberland, and Columbia counties, and in particular, Schuylkill County. 
Today's anthracite coal production is unique in that operators are remining areas that were previously mined in the past. In fact, it's been said that 98% of the anthracite produced today is from existing coal mines. Anthracite coal is formed by higher temperature and pressure and has a higher carbon content and burns cleaner and hotter than bituminous or soft coal. The state of Pennsylvania has three large anthracite coal fields, the northernmost field which runs through Luzerne and Lackawanna counties, the middle field which encompasses Carbon, Northumberland, Susquehanna, Schoolkill and the southern Luzerne counties, and the southern field which runs through Dauphin, Schoolkill and Carbon counties. Although coal mining operations in northeastern Pennsylvania aren't anywhere near what they were in the 19th and early to mid 20th centuries, there's still a stable market for the legendary anthracite, that hard coal that northeastern Pennsylvania has the country's biggest supply of, the coal that fueled the industrial revolution and beyond, the coal that's used to this day for heating and still some industrial purposes such as steel manufacturing and sugar beet refining. Since it's rich in carbon, the highest grade anthracite is used for water filtration including municipal treatment plants. The high carbon content and the fact that it yields a high BTU when it burns make anthracite useful in metal smelting and fabrication. And while it's true that the black diamonds don't have as many outlets as they did a century ago, still they haven't lost their luster or their lucrativeness. And contrary to what you might think, coal is still alive and kicking in northeastern Pennsylvania. The Knox Mine disaster of January 22, 1959, what many, including myself, call the Knox Mine murders, put an end to the deep mining in Luzerne and Lackawanna County's area. Twelve miners died when the Susquehanna River broke through and flooded the interconnected labyrinth of underground mines in the area of the Port Griffith section of Jenkins Township. Because of that, coal mining is not as big as it used to be, but it's still a vital part of Pennsylvania's economy. Today, about 95% of the anthracite mined is from the Hazleton area south. However, north of Hazleton, Casey Casa Coal in the little town of Laughlin stands as one of the last coal breakers in northeastern Pennsylvania. In the United States, anthracite coal history began in 1790 in Pottsville, Pennsylvania with the discovery of coal made by the hunter Necco Allen in what is now known as the Coal Region. Legend has it that Allen fell asleep at the base of Broad Mountain and woke up to the site of a large fire because his campfire had ignited an outcrop of anthracite coal. By 1795, an anthracite-fired iron furnace had been built on the Schuylkill River.
Anthracite was first experimentally burned as a residential heating fuel in the United States on February 11, 1808 by the Judge Jesse Fell in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania on an open grate in a fireplace. Anthracite differs from wood in that it needs a draft from the bottom and Judge Fell proved with his grate design that it was a viable heating fuel. In the spring 1808, John and Abijah Smith shipped the first commercially mined load of anthracite down the Susquehanna River from Plymouth, Pennsylvania, marking the birth of commercial anthracite mining in the United States. From that first mine, production rose to an all-time high of over 100 million tons in 1917. Anthracite usage was inhibited by the difficulty of igniting it. This was a particular concern in smelting iron using as a blast furnace. With the invention of hot blast in 1828, which used waste heat to preheat combustion air, anthracite became a preferred fuel, accounting for 45% of U.S. pig iron production within 15 years. Anthracite for iron smelting was later displaced by coke. From the late 19th century until the 1950s, anthracite was the most popular fuel for heating homes and other buildings in the northern United States until it was supplanted by oil burning systems and more recently natural gas systems. Many large public buildings such as schools were heated with anthracite burning furnaces through the 1980s. During the American Civil War, the Confederate blockade runners used anthracite as a smokeless fuel for their boilers to avoid giving away their position to the blockaders. The invention of the Wooten firebox enabled locomotives to directly burn anthracite efficiently, particularly waste coal. In the early 20th century U.S., the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad started using only the more expensive anthracite coal in its passenger locomotives, dubbed themselves the Road of Anthracite, and advertised widely that travelers on their line could make railway journeys without getting their clothes stained with soot. The advertisements featured a white-clad woman whose name was Phoebe Snow and poems containing lines like, My gown stays white from morn till night upon the road of anthracite. Similarly, the Great Western Railway in the UK was able to use its access to anthracite. It dominated the anthracite region to earn a reputation for efficiency and cleanliness unmatched by other UK companies.
internal combustion motors driven by the so-called mixed, poor, semi-water or dousing gas produced by the gasification of anthracite with air and a small proportion of steam were at one time the most economical method of obtaining power consuming one pound of fuel per horsepower hour or less. Large quantities of anthracite for power purposes were formerly exported from South Wales to France, Switzerland, and parts of Germany. As of April 2013, widespread commercial anthracite mining in Wales has now ceased, although a few large open cast sites remain, along with some relatively small drift mining operations. Anthracite generally costs two to three times as much as regular coal. In June 2008, the wholesale cost of anthracite was about $150 per short ton U.S. The principal use of anthracite today is for a domestic fuel in either hand-fired stoves or automatic stoker furnaces. It delivers high energy per its weight and burns cleanly with little soot, making it ideal for this purpose. Its high value makes it prohibitively expensive for power plant use. Other uses include the fine particles used as filter media and as an ingredient in charcoal briquettes. Anthracite is an authorized fuel in terms of the United Kingdom's Clean Air Act of 1993, meaning that it can be used within a designated smoke control area such as the central London Borough. Today, China mines by far the largest share of global anthracite production, accounting for more than three quarters of the global output. Most Chinese production is of standard grade anthracite, which is used in power generation. Increased demand in China has made that country into a net importer of the fuel, mostly from Vietnam, another major producer of anthracite for power generation, although increasing domestic consumption in Vietnam means that exports may be scaled back. Current United States anthracite production averages around 5 million tons per year. Of that, about 1.8 million of those tons were mined in the state of Pennsylvania. Mining of anthracite coal continues to this day in eastern Pennsylvania and contributes up to 1% to the gross state product. More than 2,000 people were employed in the mining of anthracite coal in 1995. Most of the mining as of that date involved reclaiming coal from slag heaps. Those are waste piles from past coal mining at nearby closed mines. Some underground anthracite coal is also being mined. Countries producing high-grade and ultra-high-grade anthracite include Russia and South Africa. High-grade and ultra-high-grade anthracite are used as a coke or coal substitute in various metallurgical coal applications such as sintering and pelletizing. It plays an important role in cost reduction in the steelmaking process and is also used in the production of ferroalloys. South Africa exports lower quality, higher ash anthracite to Brazil to be used in steelmaking. Anthracite is processed into different sizes by what is commonly referred to as a breaker. We talked about those in part one of this series. The large coal is raised from the mine and passed through breakers with two rolls to reduce the lumps to smaller pieces. The smaller pieces are separated into different sizes by a system of graduated sieves placed in descending order. Sizing is necessary for different types of stoves and furnaces. Anthracite is classified into three grades, depending on its carbon content. 
Standard grade is used as a domestic fuel and an industrial power generation. The rarer, high grades of anthracite are purer, example given they have a higher carbon content and are used in steelmaking and other segments of the metallurgical industries.